Hey there, fellow Smart Alex. My name is the Next Genius, or Bud, your host, and welcome to a very special episode of the Genius Cast, where we will be asking different questions. That's right, different questions. Our guest this week is none other than the developer of the Legend of Markiplier. Uh, you want me to call you Necrodust, Super Gamer Eight One Eight? What do you want? What do you want your name to be? Uh, just call me Arius or Alex. I don't really care either way. I'll go with Alex. Um, this. Guys, like I said, it's the developer of the oh-so-amazing Legend of Markiplier and all the other games, Warriors of Guard Guardius, all those games. Um, I've played all of his games, and or not all of them, but i played all the Legend of Markiplier games. I'm playing WOG right now. It's amazing. This guy is very talented. How are you doing, sir? Pretty good. Um, so thank you all again for joining, join, yeah, I can't talk. Thank you all for joining back into the Genius Cast. If you would like to see any other episodes, uh, please click the link in the description and that will take you to the playlist. Um, so today I will be asking Alex here some different questions about his games. I will not be asking about YouTube, uh, well, I'll ask a couple of YouTube questions, but since he is a game developer and not a YouTuber per se, I will be asking different questions. So... The first question I will ask is a YouTube question because, you know, you watch YouTube sometimes. So, who is your favorite YouTuber? I think we all know the answer to this. Uh, I got several, but surprisingly, actually, my favorite right now is Jack Set the Guy. I think Mark just kind of changed a little bit after Daniel Kyer died. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. So, I, my, I really just watch mostly Jack, but I also watch like a Smooth McGroove. Uh, Cinema Sins, Body Video, pretty much any thing that interests me. PlayStation Access. Yeah, I think Jack's one of my favorites too. Like, I, I can see where you get, well, you got the inspiration for all your um, Legend of Markiplier characters. I remember Smooth McGroove. I actually haven't watched any of his videos. I need to go and watch them. But doesn't he do like acapellas? Yeah, he does. He mostly just does like uh, existing songs. He does like acapella versions of them. He's actually really, really good. Like, he's done One Winged Angel. Like, any kind of, like, big, popular video game songs, it's a pretty good guarantee he's done them. Did you put um, clips of his songs into Legend of Markiplier? Because I think that's what it sounded like. Yep, every single song that you heard in the area where he spawns is a different one of his songs that he's performed. Dang, he he is good. Like, that sounds like like a video game soundtrack. Like, he he's really talented. I need to go watch him. But, um... So, when did you first start making games? Well, when I, ever since I was a little kid, I've, like, had an interest in, like, making video games, but I didn't actually start doing it until I stumbled upon, actually, some ordinary gamers. He played Al Oni. That's actually what got me turned on to him. And uh, I found a link to RPG Maker, downloaded it, toyed around with it, and that's really how I got started. Yeah, I played, uh, I tried downloading RPG Maker, and I played around with it for about five minutes, and or less, and, or, and gave up, because I, I could not figure out, because I put a door somewhere, like I put a cave opening or something, and then I tested it, and the cave opening didn't work, and it was already glitchy, and I was like, you know what, <laughs> I'd rather just play the RPGs and not have to make them, because I give credit to anybody who makes an RPG, especially like long games like yours, like those are probably very... Very tedious games to make, especially because you said you made like your um, your earlier games on your really old Windows XP computer. Like, yeah. I, I think my old crappy computer is is bad, man. I can't even think of how you're able to do that with Windows XP. Like, that's ancient. Yeah, especially since the computer was prone to overheating and random blue screens of death. It was a gamble every time I turned it on. Yeah, that definitely happened to me with my old computer. Yeah, my or older computer like the computer that i had before this current one um it was an okay computer but um it did shut off randomly when overheating especially like during recordings that's when it loved to do it like i was right in the middle of recording and then burp it shuts off and then it just it deleted my entire recording and i had to stop my webcam and delete it and then restart it i eventually this is stupid but it worked um i put an ice pack under the computer and that worked. It actually prevented it from overheating. And I don't know how that worked or why I thought of that, but it's not stupid if it works. So, it works, man. That's how I see it. 
I don't know when I got the idea of the ice pack. I think it was one day I was thinking, you know what? I need something cold because if it's overheating, if I put something cold on it, it won't overheat. And I'm thinking, ice pack. And so that's why I wouldn't record late at night because I would have to go and get the ice pack out of the freezer and say if it was midnight or something and I decided to record, like my, I would wake my dad up because my dad wakes up from anything. Like a leaf could fall onto the porch outside and he could wake up from it. Like he's a very light sleeper. So I can't get stuff in the middle of the night. So I, I don't know. I think I had to record during the day with the ice pack. But I'm getting off topic. Um, but was there an uh, inspiration that uh, got you to start making games? I think you said you did see Ioni from um, some ordinary gamers. But was there any other inspiration? Oh, uh, not really. I just I've always been like a big gamer, and I've always liked playing games and wondered, you know, as a writer, I'd be sitting there playing games, like, you know, what would it be like if I could turn my ideas into something? I think that's, what's, that's what started me with writing. Uh, what was that? And when I actually, when I actually got started on uh, Warriors of Guardians, that was the first game that I ever made. It was actually a dream that I had. Really? That's interesting. And, uh, yeah. Yeah first version was terrible and I went ahead and about a year or so later I remade it maybe it's still on the same engine but I made it a little better and that's the version that you have right now I think uh, there, there were some things that I put in dreams are definitely interesting ways to get ideas for books like with um, I think it was Le Legend of Roger my first book that I've told you about and I've probably told some of you listening about um, I there was a dream I had about like me running up this on this stone pathway above Earth, and I put that I made that a scene in the book, and it it really turned out well and it was interesting, and but it, I don't know how I remembered it like some, usually when I dream stuff like I don't think I don't remember it the same way when I wake up but this one was vivid, like me running on a stone pathway above the earth that was it's the strangest thing i've ever dreamed but it also made a very good book scene so i guess inspiration comes from anything yep so um besides uh warriors of guardius and uh legend of markiplier and stuff like what other games do you make or i know you mentioned being an author what well, you've told me all about your writing but to the people listening why don't you tell them about like your books and stuff well, for those of you who have seen or played Armageddon, a lot of that is based off the book series I'm working on right now. And interesting little fact, Armageddon was actually supposed to be the second game in the Legend of Markiplier series. But um, a lot of like what happens in Armageddon, like a lot of the minor details, and you can actually read in the library to for the other information. But a lot of that stuff came from the writings. And uh, I don't know. I just rather keep about games. I'm here. You, you might you might need to repeat that because I just heard some scraping. I don't think I caught any of that. Uh, I wouldn't. I'm not going to spoil too much on it. So I let's just stick with the whole game thing. Don't want to spoil anything if people decide if I get the books published and people decide to buy them. That's that's really interesting. You were planning on making Armageddon the second game. How are you? You were going to end the third game with Chains of Eternity. Um, no, Chains of Eternity. Well, when I started working on Armageddon, because like I said, that was supposed to be the second game in the series. When I started working on it, um, I realized that I didn't have the tile sets that I needed. I didn't have the modern day future stuff. So while I waited to get the money to buy all the, all the, the DLC so I can get all those tile sets, I was sitting there thinking, I was like, okay, so I need another game to squeeze in here. Because as I thought about it, I was like, oh, Armageddon would be good for to end the series anyway to be a sequel, so that's I don't even know how Chains came to being. I just sat down and next thing I know I had the first the prologue of Chains done. Cause when I first started playing Chains, like I um because I'm not going to spoil what happens, because anybody uh, listening who hasn't played the game or hasn't watched my playthrough, like the ending of it like it were like the beginning and ending of it, it you you don't think that gosh i don't know how i can say this without spoiling it you know i'm just i'm just gonna leave it there i'm not gonna say what happens but i didn't think that um because tom well, thinks it's a dream 
Like, and I thought it was a dream, too. And, you know, I, I'm not spoiling it. Anybody who's listening to this, that's not what it is. Like, especially the second game. Like, but, like, you, you told me that you were planning, you didn't know how the series was going to end until you started Chains, right? I might have known how the series was going to end until I actually started actively working on Armageddon. So even after Chains was done, you still wasn't planning for it to end like it did? Yeah, all I knew was that I wanted it to end with Armageddon. I just didn't know how I could end it while also keeping myself from making another one. So you're not you're not going to make another Legend of Markiplier? No. I've toyed with the idea of making kind of a spinoff starring Jack that takes place... Well, uh, hmm. how should I put this? That takes place while the events of Mark Claire are going on. You know what yeah. would be interesting is, like, if you were to, like, because Jack's not in the second game. Maybe you could make, like, a spin-off game to where Jack's on his own little adventure while they're off in chains doing whatever. Uh, that's what I was thinking. Maybe that would make the most sense, because he's, if he's not in the second game, what is he doing? Well, and this is kind of what I have, what, the, roughly what I have planned with uh, the Jack game. And there will be some minor spoilers from Armageddon, but I can't really avoid him. But anyway, then when he's coming back from the uh, convention, his plane gets shot down, or gets cra- crash lands in the middle of the ocean, he wakes up on a deserted island, and that's the basic thing I have, but I haven't thought too much into it. Interesting. Because I remember he um, he mentions in the third game, like, when you find him in the jail cell, he says, um, you know, I, 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 I'm sitting there recording some Nautica, and then I wake up in an alleyway. Like, it... I was wondering if you could base it off of that, or you may, maybe it's after he after whatever happens in the game you're planning. I don't know how that will work, but um, yeah, a Jack, I would definitely play that, like a spinoff of of, uh, of that with Jack in it, like the, like how much I love Jack. That'd be something I'd love playing. Well, I could consider doing that, but because of what is revealed in Armageddon is actually going on, Marks would not or Jack's game would not obviously would not have any kind of relation to Mysterium or the base where they're Armageddon. It'd be more of, like, where we are right now, like this world. Right, right. You know, it, 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 you were saying it, like, wouldn't really make very much sense to the story? Yeah, pretty much. Right, uh, because I think in the third game, like, he, um... Because I'm trying to still figure out, like, between the first and third games, like, he goes home, like, along with Bob and Wade, but then... Uh, like our because he mentions in the, in the third game when you pick him up he says you, that he says to Mark that you never came home, so is like so Bob and Wade didn't go home either. It was it only Jack that actually went home, or maybe Jack wasn't there at all. Right, 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 right. I I, I know I since I know the ending I know what you mean by that. Um, when you get into like it's like the same thing with books. You know when you're writing a book and you have like these main characters. But there's, but you know, as an author, you'll be writing a book with these certain characters. But occasionally, some characters in your book will take a sideline for the main story to continue. It's kind of similar to that. And if you think about the truth of the entire trilogy, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And it's like it that I like I said, I'm not going to spoil what it is, but say, when Tom finishes it, like, I'd love to see his reaction to that. Like, because he, he loves the game so far, and it's like, because I'm pretty sure when you saw my reaction, you you, were, you pretty much enjoyed that, because, I, like I said, I didn't expect it at all, and, you know, anybody else who finds it, like, I really want to see their reactions, because it just makes you consider the entire series. You're like, I just, so all that I've played was just this. It's like, I don't know, like, it's a very interesting turn of events. And but that's why I love Legend of Markiplier so much, because there's so much interesting stuff in it. But um, let me see, what's our next one? Is there been any, has there been like any like rock, like besides like your uh, your computer crisis and stuff? Has there been like any rocky parts of making games and writing that you've come across? Um, I'm very prone to writer's block. Writer's block. I I couldn't agree more. And sometimes like I'll get. Because I go through these Game of the Week things where for like a week or two I'll be like really into the game. And then the next week or two I'm into something else. 
So a lot of that was just like I'd be I work compulsively on either Armageddon or Chains or whatever for about a week or two, and then I would get burned out, and then I'd be playing an actual game, and I'd be hooked on that, and it could be a month or two before I get back to building the game again. Is that why it took you so long to make Armageddon? Because I remember you said it took you only a week to make Legend of Markiplier, the first game, and then it said you took you three months to make Chains, and then like over a year to make Armageddon, right? It took me a week, yeah, it took me a week to make the first game, it took me... I want to say it was like a month or two to make Chains, and it took me about a year and a half to make Armageddon. How are you able to make the first game in a week? Like that's like the game is long, and it's like how how are you? How did you make that in a week? Like I'm really impressed. It wasn't that hard? I mean, it's not long compared to later games in the series. And if I have like enough time, I can pretty much. I made about an area a day. I think is what I did. Like I'd have goals set were like okay so today i want to get forest done tomorrow i want to get the snow area done so that sort of thing i feel like because i think uh when i did my live stream on it like i i speed ran it and got that done in like maybe two hours so but if you just sit back and play it and just like go at a normal speed it's like three to five hours and it's like that that's pretty long. I mean, consider like an RPG game, like something that that's made in a week that takes you 5 hours to play. That's still really impressive. Like I couldn't do that. Like and I know that people that have made games like like a couple of the fan games that have been made for me, like the first fan game that I ever played uh was Five Nights at Buds from a guy named Colster. His real name's Colin, but he was one of my earlier fans and he made uh he he threw together a uh, Five Nights at Buds thing. And it took him, like, a couple of months. And that was only a night one demo. So it does take a long time to make different games. But I guess with your RPG experience, it doesn't take that long for you, though. Yeah, because that, that came right on the heels of Warriors of Guardians. So I would have gotten on my... I would have spent all the time I needed to figure out how to use the engine and to test out what works and what doesn't and most of the bugs and stuff, how to avoid them, I got from Warriors of Guardians, which made Markiplier pretty much really easy to do but um is there like do you for anybody like trying to make rpgs out there do you have like any tips for them because i know you have a lot of experience with them um because with me i I did it for like five minutes i couldn't do it but anybody else who's like really trying to make an rpg out there do you have any advice for them what i suggest doing is that browse the rpg maker forums find games that are not encrypted that could be like a i know a Five Nights at F-Boys isn't encrypted. But find games that aren't encrypted, and if you kind of go into the engine and you look at how the person who built it put it together, you can kind of learn a little bit how things work. I know that um, that uh, Sean is trying to make uh, Bud's Quest, which is kind of like a Legend of Markiplier-ish thing uh, based off of me, but it um, he tried making the game twice, and both times it corrupted on him. Did you ever run into that? Like any of your files corrupting? Um, no, but I keep like three or four backups. So that's why I, I think I think I forgot to mention to him to make backups. But he said that his uh, he'll be starting uh, ninth grade ninth grade I think yeah ninth grade next year and he's in a special class to where any video games he makes actually goes toward his high school credit. Man, I wish I was in that class. Man, I wish that kind of, that kind of class in high school. But uh, he said he'll, that the, the, his school will probably uh, provide him with a nice computer and he'll be able to make Bud's Quest then. Even though I'll be in college, he'll be able to make it. And hopefully, I'll still be making YouTube videos like around next year. So, And hopefully, I'll be bigger then too. So um, more people will see it. But yeah, I, I think yeah, making RPGs is not easy. And But I'm, was it hard for you when you first started? Or did you get the hang of it pretty quickly? Well, I was confused on what to do at first, but over time and kind of toying around to see what works and what doesn't, I, doesn't, doesn't, I can't speak. But after toying around to see what works and what doesn't, I kind of figured it out over time. I might try I making take... R- I might try making RPGs again. I might. I'll try it again, and if I still can't get anything to work, I think I'll just give it up for good and just play the RPGs. But because when you have a finished product, what? It just takes a lot of trial and error. Yeah, that's what it, that's what it seems like it does. Mm-hmm. Let's see. All right, so 
but I can't. My questions disappeared. Oh, there they are. Um, what's the thing you like most about making games and your writing? Just the potential of seeing how people react to them, really. I like, think... I, I was excited to see how people would react to the betrayals in the first game and some of the, the big reveal in the second and third game. Yeah, that was my favorite part of it too. Like the the, the reveals. Like anybody who's playing, anybody who plans to play Legend of Markiplier, prepare for shocks because there are a lot of them. Um, but that's I I like that, and I like the um, I the thing I like about writing, like I told you, is just like writing anything you want. Like if it if it goes into making a game or writing a book, it doesn't matter. You don't have to write what people want you to. You can just write whatever you want and just it, your imagination just flows out onto the page and it becomes a story it's your own story you can do whatever you want with it and that's what i always like about my books is like i just i to finish a book and it's like dang that's original and nobody's ever done that before and it's really interesting no, would never happen in real life because you know there's magic and stuff in it but if it did happen in real life that would be awesome but you know i guess that's the fun of it knowing that it will never happen in real life but you can make it happen in your book well, even with my fantasy stuff, because a lot of the things that I build and that I work on, they're definitely fantasy. They have a lot of fantasy elements. But at the same time, too, I also try to push some kind of scientific explanation into things. If anything, just to make them a little more realistic and a little more believable. I think, yeah, my dad told me that um, when... Say if I'm writing fantasy, like with my... Fan, with uh, The second book I wrote was called Rise of the Nightmares. And... I did have real places and stuff in there, and he he did tell me to do the realistic thing. Like even though it's fantasy and there's stuff in there that's not real, you still got to make things a little realistic. And there were some things that he did point out that would not make sense, and it and he was right. And we went through the entire book and changed up stuff and made sure everything made sense. And in the end, it turned out to be a really great story. And I haven't uh, thought about publishing it yet. It's still a manuscript, but. Um, we're, he's looking for a way to either make it an ebook or make it a, a hardback or paperback copy. Um, I don't know because the problem with that is like even if you do make it into an actual book, like who's gonna buy it? Like you're like with my first book for example, like it's only sold like 15 copies and it was put up on Amazon in 2012. So that shows you like how some people don't really notice it. But it's a gamble. Is what it is. It's a gamble. You either win or you lose. Either way, that's why I don't really... I mean, yeah, I want it to be successful, but at the same time, I understand that odds are it won't be. So I just write it because I like writing it. And that's all I can really suggest is that if you like doing it, don't do it or don't not do it just because it's not going to be popular. I mean, I bet you anything that's going to be really, really hard to get my stuff sold because of how random and controversial they are. But... You know, if you like doing something, do it. You know, don't think about how other people react. If you truly enjoy doing something, who cares what people think? You should do it because you want to do it. That's what I always think is, like, people are always, you know, reluctant to start YouTube and stuff like that, saying, like, oh, I'm afraid of what people th will think of it. You know, and that doesn't matter. It does, it does, who, don't care about that. If it's something you want to do, then do it. It's like I didn't think about that when I started my my YouTube. Like when when I was going through the uh, the crisis of being you know hated on by I'm not gonna name his name, but there was somebody that used that I used to be friends with. Um, God, I don't remember his name. I don't even remember where he was from. But there were a couple of people that I was friends with. I had a fallout with one, but I was able to make up with him, and I think we're on somewhat good terms now. Um, his name is Benjamin, I think. But this other guy, I don't remember, God, I don't remember what it was. But I went through a lot of hate. And I was being called a bunch of names and stuff. And I just thought, you know, I'm just going to ignore it. And it'll go away eventually. And it did go away eventually. But, you know, anybody out there who's reluctant to do anything because of what they'll, what people will think, that's don't pay attention to that. It doesn't matter what people think. You do it. So Think about it this way. It doesn't matter how big or popular something is. Or even, it doesn't matter if something's popular or it's not. Everything has its fans, and everything has its haters. You're never going to get something that's universally liked or universally hated. Every little thing 
that anyone can possibly do. Every little thing in the world has fans and it has people who hate it. I couldn't agree more. It's always like that. Any anything, like any any YouTuber, any like famous writer, like anybody, they'll always have haters. There'll always be people out there that will not like your work. Like my dad has gotten a couple of haters on his books. And it's like he's like, you know what? Who cares? You know, if they don't like it, they don't like it. You know, but yeah, you're 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 absolutely right on that. You'll never have a perfect like like ratio. There's always going to be some dislikes. Well, and here's also something like for you in trying to get your book published. The thing, and if you, because I'm I'm trying to find an agent because book agents will are the ones that sell to the publishers that take care of the marketing, all that stuff. And even if you get rejected when you're trying to get people to read it, think about it this way. J.K. Rowling was rejected eight times before she got her first Harry Potter novel published. I heard that. Stephen King. Stephen King was rejected like 16 times before he finally got Carrie published. Damn. You know, these fans, they've all been rejected. So you just got to keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. Eventually, there'll be someone out there that'll grab it. Yeah. I, I didn't actually learn about the about J.K. Rowling and that and, and her problems with that until just recently. Like I was watching a video about like 101 facts about Harry Potter. Yeah, one of them was how she was rejected a bunch of times. And it's like considering how famous Harry Potter is, you wouldn't expect like her to be rejected a lot. And did, did you hear about there's going to be an eighth book? I heard about it, but I don't really like Harry Potter, so. Oh, Most okay. of what I read is Stephen King, Carolini, and Anne McCaffrey. Yeah, but there is going to be another Harry Potter. I'm very interested to read that. But yeah, some people don't like Harry Potter. That's what we were just talking about. There are people that like it and people that don't. And because different people have different tastes. And, you know, and I, have, I understand that. You know, when I first started YouTube, like, I thought that everybody was going to like me. But not everybody does. And, you know, I've learned to respect that and I've learned to get used to that. Because not everybody likes your work. Which is sad, but true. You know, as the old saying goes, different strokes are different folks. That's a, that that's a, that makes a lot of sense. But um, let's see, is there anything else? Is there anything you would like to uh, tell the people listening before we wrap up? Uh, not that I can think of. No. Well, I think that'll end this uh, this special episode of the Genius Cast. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Why don't you go and um, do you want me to link your Game Goat page or your YouTube page? What do you want me to link? Yeah, I just link the Game Jolt. Uh, go check out um, Alex's Game Jolt page. It'll have all of his um, Legend of Markiplier and Warriors of Guardia stuff on there if you're interested to play it. Um, and I'll have links to all my Legend of Markiplier stuff in the description too. The games are awesome. I recommend if you don't want to, if you're not interested in playing the game, if you want to watch my playthrough, I highly recommend it. Not just because it's my playthrough, just because it's the game. I'll also link Tom's playthrough. Um, but yeah, y'all got to check the games out. They're amazing. They're definitely worth playing. And I think that'll wrap up everything. Thank you all for listening and thank you for being on the show, Alex. It was nice talking to you. Nice learning about your gaming and stuff. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Anything else you want to add? And uh, nope, not that I can think of. Thanks for having me on the show, and I'll see the rest. Of, I'll see all you guys later. All right, no Peace problem, out. man. See you guys later. Thanks for listening. Bye, bye, guys. Bye.